In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, today the Church is celebrating the synaxis of the Mother of God. The Mother of God is the second day today of the Nativity of the, our Lord Jesus Christ, and for her it was the greatest joy to be able to be the Mother of the newborn King of the Lord Himself. And uh, the Church decided to celebrate Today is the second day of the Christmas, and I'm giving the honor to the Mother of God. The Mother of God was, of course, the example of humility. She followed, of, uh, of course, the teachings of the Holy Spirit in, the, in following in her son's footstep in the humility. As you notice in the, in the Gospel or in the Epistles, very little said about her, and this was because she didn't want to receive any glory uh, here on earth while she was alive. And she had uh, forbid, actually, the disciples to write about her much. And uh, this is how she was. But she was spending times of tears, as we know, in the, many times in her life it was when she was born the child was born with her it was without any travail without any pain without any customary suffering that the women go through it was he was born supernaturally and uh, uh, she was a virgin before uh, she conceived and she was a virgin while she was uh, was bearing the child and as she gave the birth she still kept on being the virgin and this is a great miracle the mother of god though cried um, so much in her lifetime when she saw the unfair treatments that the uh, her uh, fellow countrymen had shown to the lord to her god and our god and her son and god and it was very difficult for her. It was very difficult for her then, and especially when the Lord was taken up to Pilate and then he was finally crucified and her heart was all broken and she you know, cried out in, in, in great pain because she felt the pain of her son and she knew that her son had taken up all the sins of the whole world and my sins and your sins and it was still so difficult for her but she didn't harden up her heart against us she didn't turn on us knowing even though that we are we were the cause of the pain of her son she adopted us and is, and is praying for us all the time and shows the great benefit being our great beneficiary all the life after the lord had taken her soul from her and brought her body up to the kingdom of heaven as you know on the, on the third day the, the saint luke started with the first icon of of uh, the mother of god and the mother of god said there will be the my grace will be coming through this icon and she will help through this icon and she continued to do that and there's actually countless of uh, icons has become miracle making or um, the proper thing would be is that the mother of god was doing the miracles through her icons for centuries, especially for the Russian people, so many gifts we had from the Mother of God, so many icons. That just one icon of Kazanske, icon of Mother of God, is known that there was over 500 copies made that they were all my Mother of God was pleased with them. And then and when people approached with faith and threw the icon to the Mother of God, she would give them miracles. And it's happening all over the world and it has been happening all over the world and of course there is a big tragedy that uh, there are some people that still call themselves Christians but they have denied the access to the mother of God or to the apostles or all the saints they and uh, have considered that uh, they can directly only approach the or should approach only the Lord himself and they don't need any any help it's so foolish are those people they call themselves protestants well they are protesting against the love that the mother of god has given them 
against the mystery that the Lord has given through His grace to to her and to all the saints to perform deeds of mercy and, and to help you know, people all over the world. They are our friends in the kingdom of heaven. My beloved Mother of God is our mother. She has adopted us. She is willing always to intervene for us when we cry out. If we know in our conscience that we are no good next and that we don't have enough love, we don't have enough fear of, of God and do not have enough respect for Him or we have fear because of our sinfulness that we can't approach Him. We always can approach the Mother of God because she will go to her Son and, and plead for us and the Lord will help us. Numerous times she has done that for me and for many other ones and of course many saints have went through this from being terrible sinners. They have totally changed their life through the intervention of the Mother of God because she had giving them that strength and kept on interceding for them to the Lord and to make them to really totally change in, li uh, in their lives. And this is what we have to do, my beloved. We have to cry out to the Mother of God you know, as often as possible, especially when our feel our heart is cold and we can't reach our Lord because of our sinfulness. But we we'll cry out to the Mother of God asking for the intervention and she intercede for us before the Lord and it opens up then the prayer for us and we can approach the Lord. And this is the mystery. There is a great, great joy and of course in all the people that have made it and they, that are in heaven. And there's a great joy here on this earth for all the people that are still here and acknowledge and recognize the Theotokos, the Mother of God as being our also Mother and our helper and that she is always is willing to listen to her by children that, that, that commit sins, but she is willing to listen and to help them to straighten out as a true, true mother. My beloved, our mother of God has suffered so much and she showed us the road of humility and this is what we have to try to follow. We have to try to follow that road of humility and the modesty that she has shown and, and the great love that she has shown and not judge anybody and not turn against anybody as she has never done before. The, while she was in this earth, she went and truly ex accepted all the teachings of her son and filled it perfectly. My beloved, when we're down and out and when it's difficult for us, when we don't seem to have the strength to cry out to the Lord himself, and let's remember our mother, the mother of God, and, and Jesus Christ's mother, and let's cry out to her to help us to change, to help us to, to conquer whatever we have to conquer so that we are able to approach our Lord directly with the, with the prayers through through help, through her help. She's always with us, as she has said that to the disciples when she appeared in heaven after you know, they opened up the grave and found that the, the, her body is not there. And that evening, uh, at the time after the Eucharist, after the communion, the apostles saw her in the sky and where she has uh, told them that she will never leave us, she'll be always with them. And she is. She is always with us. And if we approach the icon through faith, and we approach the Mother of God through the icon and ask for her to show us mercy and to bring us closer to her Son, to teach us that humility which can bring us into the kingdom of heaven because only through that humility we will acquire true love. We'll be able to love the Lord and we'll be able to love each other and, and thus be able to even taste the for have the foretaste of the kingdom of heaven even here on earth. In no matter what the, the situations may be, no matter how much the body may be str struggling and suffering with pains and agonies and all kinds of sorrows, but our heart is still will be already rejoicing in the knowledge that the Lord is with us and the Mother of God and all the heavenly dwellers, and they are rejoicing and waiting for us to make it to the kingdom of heaven. Amen.